Hi there, this is Perch, and talking variant covers for a minute. So variant covers is, um, it's an interesting topic because it's one of those things that there are certainly a lot of fans and collectors that uh, like them, that that's part of their normal comic buying trade. And there are shops that have a very love-hate relationship with them because on one hand, variant covers do bring in uh, bigger you know spots of revenue uh, all at once. But on the other hand, obtaining those variant covers is often uh, problematic, let's say. It's, it's uh, often complicated, often requires you to buy things you don't really want to buy um, or you know, creates a sense of waste. So um, by the way, just as a, a bit of a disclaimer here, I'm gonna talk about variant covers and how you obtain them uh, at the shop in, a very, in very broad terms. You can, you can absolutely come in here and nitpick uh, certain things I say by, with uh, what abouts. Like, uh, well, what about this and what about that? And hey, this this one variant cover incentive program worked differently than you're saying. That's true. There, there have been a lot of uh, different ideas and different models used. So I'm going to speak very, very generally about how it works. And and if anyone really cares about some of those differences, I'm, I'm happy to go into them. I can even, uh, I'll even do a little bit at the end of some of the different things that have been tried, but I'm not going to cover them all. It would take a long time and, and be of absolutely no use to anybody. So uh, first off, you know, in case you don't know, what's a variant cover? Well, a variant cover is simply uh, a collector's uh, style uh, edition of a comic where the interior of the comic is the same and the cover has a special uh, drawing, a, a different uh, cover than the normal mass market one. And often the variant covers are commissioned by uh, more, no, more known artists, uh, not a few famous artists, if you will. Uh, J. Scott Campbell did a lot of variant covers um, early on and, and still does. Um, those, that's what a variant cover is. It's just a way of uh, providing a, a collector-friendly creator, a collector-friendly artist uh, on the cover. And variant covers have, uh, you know, usually... Uh, have very little to do with the interior. Uh, part of it is how the, the cover is commissioned. Um, it's not uncommon that variant covers are commissioned by artists without uh, giving any background into the comic inside. So they're just, they're, they're getting art. In particular, you'll see this with um, artists that are more well-known or, or maybe take longer. Um, if you're doing a you know, variant cover by Art Adams, you're probably giving him a little bit more time. And so he's drawing something that really doesn't attach to the comic within. Uh, because they're trying not to, you know, have a variant cover get into the schedule. Also, if uh, they get more variant cover um, stock, um, <laughs> art, if you will, uh, then they might, you know, spread it out over a couple months. That's that's true, too. Uh, then another style of variant cover uh, became a series of variant covers. So this is where you have a theme of some kind, um, and where you're going to do a number of variant covers on a theme, like you have a cat theme. And so you're going to have all the little Marvel uh, characters dressed up like cats or, or you know, <laughs> sorry, cats dressed up like Marvel characters. They haven't really done the furry um, theme yet. Uh, I mean, who knows? Um, but th this is this has done uh, been going on for a while now. And I think the one that got the most uh, PR or uh, attention was the, the hip hop variant covers that Marvel did where. Um, uh, Axel got a lot of uh, press and did some interviews on it. I'm not sure why exactly, honestly. I don't know why that caught the attention of, of the media that they were doing this kind of variant cover run, but it did. And so you had those that are happening, and those tend to be, um, let's see, let's say increasingly popular because there are collectors out there who want to get the entire run of the series of variant covers. It's, it's kind of just yet a, another... Um, mechanism and another scheme that just the publishers and, and people are using to try and encourage collectors to buy comics who really don't care about the inside of the comics. So, and then the last kind of variant cover, I, I always found it laughable until I went to a convention, until I saw it in action, but I, it took me having to see it with my own eyes to get it. And that was the variant cover that has no cover. It's just blank and um, it's kind of been dubbed the convention cover or the sketchbook cover where uh, so you could take it to a convention and get a uh, commission on your comic. So you can get somebody to draw on that comic uh, for you. 
And I mean, you know, hey, I, me being a little dense, I did not get this whole idea of, of a blank cover. And then when um, when I saw it show up at the show, then it's like, oh, OK, uh-huh. I, I, <laughs> there you go. Then I felt very foolish um, because it, it seemed obvious at that point why you would do that. But those are quite popular as well. And those, I think, are pretty cool. I think, you know, if you've seen uh, some of those come in and you get a, uh, a nice commission on the front of a comic, it's always a little weird when somebody comes in and they want to trade or, or sell a comic and it's one of those and it's a, it's a Batman uh, comic and somebody, they draw drawn Spider-Man on the front of it for, I, I don't quite understand what was going on there, but, you know, hey, whatever. It's uh, this hand sketch cover is, is pretty cool. And if you get a, a real noteworthy artist and you can get the artist who's attached to the book that is actually being drawn on. Uh, so the art fits, that's, that's the best. Um, and those, those do really, really well uh, in terms of collectability and, and trade and everything else. They're, they're unique. So where does, you know, so this is all kind of fun. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, nobody's holding a gun to anybody's head. Nobody's making anyone buy a variant cover. Um, this is, you know, this is, absolutely the definition of opt-in if you want it great if you don't you, you don't have to buy the variant cover you can buy the other one and the variant cover costs more so it's uh it's something specialized it's more expensive and and there's no harm in that right well mostly right uh there there isn't harm in it except kind of the mechanism of how you get the variant comic and here's where it breaks down a little bit but it's it's one of those areas where it's not unlike uh, toys or collectibles. If you if you think about trading cards, where they have a, a, a foil card hidden in every hundred packs or, or whatever, these kind of random high collectability. Um, what that does is, as a customer, you come in and you buy, you know, hundreds of packs of cards, hoping to get the foil card. And you know you're going to waste a lot of money and you're going to waste a lot of cards. You know, maybe you get lucky and the first pack you, you open up is the one has the special card you want. But more likely, you're going to be sitting around with, you know, piles and piles of extra uh, stock, just extra cards, doubles, duplicates, and other things. So you got to get rid of them, and then you're, you know, hopefully you're selling them or trading them or, you know, ultimately, you know, putting them in the garbage. So there's a lot of waste there, and um, and you are wasting a lot of money, I think. But this this is a concept is not new. You, you see it with cards, you see it with toys. There's the entire uh, Hatchimal, uh, you know, mis- you know, mystery toy in an egg kind of thing that is all based around this concept. It's, it's, you know, there's something special and you got to buy to get it. Well, with variant covers, it's not a mystery. It's not like a polybagged comic where you don't know what cover you're getting. Um, but it still follows the same premise of in order to obtain it as a shop, you have to order, say, you know, keep the math simple here. You order a hundred copies of this comic. And if you order a hundred copies, then you get one variant cover. And the variant cover you might sell for 20 bucks. And so a lot of store owners start to do this math, which is how many comics can I order to get to the expensive variant that I can sell and still squeak out a profit or, you know, where I, I'm, I know I'm going to have copies sitting on the shelf and I'm not going to sell. I know I'm going to have extra stock that's going to get wasted. But the profit of getting to that variant cover is going to be higher than ordering, say, you know, again, keeping the math simple. If, if I was going to order 80 copies of a comic um, and then sell it at cover, but if I were 100 copies, then I got, you know, one or, you know, I got a couple variants. Well, the variants I know I can sell for a markup. So therefore, I might order an extra 20 copies, knowing I'm not going to sell them, knowing they're going to sit on the shelves, but the profit margin of the variance is high enough that it makes sense. I think that's that's kind of the mental math that a lot of shop owners are doing. And this this has had a bit of a side effect. And the side effect is, uh, you know, customers are coming in and saying, I want the variant. If you want my business, I want the variant issue. So, and they're willing to pay the markup, but that also means they're forcing the comic shop now to make that choice, to make the choice of, of having to, uh, buy extra stock they they know they won't sell. So if you weren't really profiting off this uh, this kind of I don't want to say scheme, but if if this wasn't working for you, then suddenly you're in a you're in a position where you you don't have a choice anymore, um, or you do have a choice, but your choice is lose the customer or find a way to make that stock work for you. 
And month by month, as you have, you know, revenue and profit coming into the shop, you might not have the extra profit or the extra funds to go all in on these variant covers. So then it gets to be a problem. And that's that in a nutshell is where things are becoming um, pretty, pretty problematic because you can quickly find that the model turns upside down on you and you've got just a lot of stock on the shelf now that you're not selling and your business is mainly fed by variant collectors. And those variant collectors are, you know, giving you lots of money. They're giving you a higher percentage of cash. uh, But in order to keep them, you're spending more than you want. And then now you're, now you're stuck because if you back away from that, if you say, I'm not going to uh, sell the variant covers anymore, then you're going to lose those customers and you're stuck with that lower, lower tier. And if you've kind of maneuvered your business a little bit to cater to them, you're now going to have to move back and move back relatively quickly. And in a world where comics were a dollar, dollar twenty-five, um, you could do that, and it wasn't, you know, the, the financial hit of all this wasn't so dramatic for month to month. But in a world where everything's three ninety-nine or four ninety-nine, um, you know, we're talking pretty big numbers, and so you can't just move and change direction quickly without incurring some level of penalty. So that's the that's kind of the negative um, aspect of variance, and there's. There's a lot of different variant schemes. It's not all, you know, buy 10, get one. There's um, usually multiple variants. So it's if a comic like a Fantastic Four number one or an Iron Man number one had, I, I mean, <laughs> I forgot now, but like upwards of what felt like 30 to 40 variants for that one title. And you had a lot of different different models and you have, you know, buy 50 and you can get this one, buy 75 and you can get this one. Um, kind of some of the worst uh, for me are uh, buy you know, Iron Man plus, uh, you know, Moon Girl and Squirrel Girl, and then you can qualify for this, this parade. That's the worst, where you're now having to step in and buy copies of comics that are completely unrelated to the variant you're trying to get. And and so then it gets, it gets very complex. It gets tough to manage your stock. And again, it can be done. It just means as a business owner, you have to be thoughtful going in to what kind of game you're going to play and what kind of stock you're going to keep on hand. If it's something you casually step into, then very, very quickly you find yourself with a lot of unsold copies. And, you know, at best, you just feel kind of bad because you've got extra stock and you're and wasteful. You're just you're, you're basically just wasting uh, space and wasting comics. It, it feels very eco unfriendly, <laughs> if you will. Um, but at worst, <clears throat> it means you're now suddenly shelling out a lot of money to get to variants to keep a customer base that may not be the healthiest for you long term. And so a lot of smaller shops are getting out of the variant game. Uh, They are just opting out and saying, you know, I'm going to order what I can sell. And if that means I get variants, great. If it doesn't, you know, that that's just the way it's going to go. And they're willing to let those customers go other places. And I think if you're small as a business, that's really the only sensible route you can take. I think anything else is just it's putting too much of your business in jeopardy doing making the wrong decisions. Um, it does mean that, you know, you, you, many comic stores do rely on their, their whales, if you will. The big customers who come in and spend a lot of money. Those tend to be the bread and butter of, of how a lot of shops survive. And you need to take care of those whales, but maybe there's better ways to do it. Maybe the ways, way that you do it as a smaller shop is that you establish a network to a bigger shop. And you basically handle the transaction. You tell your your customer who spends a lot of money, hey, um, I, I'm not going to order the variant directly, but I will get it for you. And I'm going to get it for you at uh, you know very little profit to me. I'm going to basically sell it to you at cost or, or maybe with a very small markup or just very, very simple. The benefit to you, the customer, is that you're going to just get it normally with your pull box and everything else. It's just going to come in uh, on time. The benefit to me is I'm not loading up on a bunch of extra stock. And my hope is that by, you know, taking care of this for you, by offering this service that, you know, you're you're going to keep giving your money to me and you're going to spend that money with all the other comics that you buy month to month. So that's kind of the, the you know, one model that you can use. But variants are, variants are um, if you can make them work for you, uh, they're fine. I mean, they're not. I'm not one of those people that says variants are gold and they're the best thing ever and they're a big profit driver. There are definitely some shops who have figured out that that model and they like it. But 
you know, to that point, uh, you know, I had a, a person, a guy I knew at a shop who swore by them. Uh, it was a big part of his monthly revenue and he was, he was all in. And a year later he was all out because it, it flipped on him. You know, he lost uh, four or five customers who discovered that they could get those variants from a, you know, a big online uh, retailer for 10% less. And they did. And then suddenly they were gone. And then he had, you know, a basically a four to six month gap of way over ordering and not being able to sell. And uh, now he's marking down in variants. You can always tell, by the way, a store that has flipped on variants when you go in there and you see like the, their bag and you see the, the price tag on there and or like a little sticker. And then you see another sticker on top of the first sticker that is cheaper. You could always tell that, oh, somebody overordered here and now they've got more than what they want and they're going to have to figure out how to get rid of it. Um, and that's a that's an unhappy moment. That's a store that's going through a, an unhappy process, uh, but hopefully it can get to some stability. So there you have it. That's uh, that's variants in a nutshell. Um, hope you enjoyed listening. Um, if you'd like, subscribe, uh, tell a friend, please tell a friend. Um, there, you know, there's some people here who comics uh, are on social media and a lot of other places are just filled with a lot of um, not not tox- toxic. I mean, the, the word toxic is thrown around too much, but um, I'm I'm going to try and keep it very positive, very informative as best I can. So if you have a, a person you know who likes comics but is kind of fed up with the constant uh, social war around comics, then, hey, point them our way. We'd love to have them and, and hear what they have to say. Uh, hit the bell for notification if you want that. And uh, go follow me on Comic Perch at Twitter and give me some, give me some feedback. Uh, there you go. Have a great day.